Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. About a year ago, I did an entire video series on Capture One. The video series was meant for those that weren't exposed to Capture One at all. So at the very beginning of the series, we started out with very basic concepts, but we built upon that with every subsequent video. And those that stayed with the series by the last video were really Capture One experts. Now, even though that video series was highly praised, of all the video series I've ever done, that video series got the least number of views. And I think I, there's really two reasons for that. The first reason is Capture One's a little bit cost prohibitive. It's more expensive than most of the other applications that are available today. Also, Capture One is just different. The workspace is different and it has different tools and controls. So it's a little a bit of a learning curve to understand how it works. But with that said, those that stick with Capture One find that it's a little more nuanced than other applications and you're able to really do a lot more with it uh, in general, just general processing of a RAW file. Also, people that shoot Fuji particularly and Sony believe that Capture One is superior to any other application for processing those specific types of RAW files. So um, if you're a Fuji or Sony user, you're probably very interested in using Capture One. Now, recently Phase One, the creator of Capture One, came out with a new version of Capture One. It's Capture 120. And recently, I've been getting an increasing number of emails from people asking me to do videos on it. So I am going to be doing some videos on Capture One uh, Pro 20 or 20 Pro. I'm not really sure how it goes. But either way, I'm going to do some videos on it. And I'm going to start out today with just processing an image. It's going to be some very basic processing to give you an idea of how Capture One actually works and how it's laid out. And we're going to start out with this image right here. And with this image, it's very basic processing, but we're going to do a couple different things uh, to it that you may not do to every image, but you're going to need to know. Um, all right, this is a RAW file. This happens to be a Fuji RAW file. And I mentioned that uh, many people feel that Capture One is superior with Fuji files. Um, also, I'll have links in the description below the video what I encourage you to do is download their fully working trial version. Um, it's a 30-day fully working version, so you really could mess with it a lot and see if it's something that you would use instead of whatever application you're currently using. So there'll be links for that in the description below. Now, um, as far as the workspace is concerned, you can see it's considerably different. All the controls are over here on the left. And over here on the right is the film strip of images I happen to have in that folder. So it's kind of different than most of the other applications. But um, with Capture One, you're able to really configure this any way you want. And I'm just going to show you real quickly. If I go to Window and go to Workspace, you can see that I have a workspace I saved called Anthony's Workspace. And when I click on that, you're going to see that the workspace will transform into the workspace the way I like to use it, with the controls on the right. And I actually uh, redid the controls. And I have a new tab over here with the controls that I most often use in the order I most often use them. So it helps streamline my workflow. Now, I'm not going to process this image in this workspace because if you're downloading that trial version I'm talking about, you're not going to have this workspace you're going to have the default workspace. So we're going to go to that. And I'm just going to process this image in the default workspace to kind of give you an idea of what you're dealing with when you use Capture One. Now I mentioned the controls and everything are on the left. Now we're in like this area here is where the folders are in your images. And then the next is for tethering. That's got the camera icon on it. Then the next is lens. These are... Um, so you could correct, correct different lens distortions that the uh, RAW file is exhibiting. Now for this image, it already checked chromatic aberration and high distorted areas. That's fine. Everything's good there. Um, what I need to do, if you look at the um, lights, you can see how they're tilted in and backwards a little bit. 
So I need to correct that. So that's called keystoning. So I'm going to go to the vertical control of the keystone panel. And I'm going to just click on that, move that to the right. And you can see as soon as I click on it, a grid comes on there to help you straighten things. And I'm just going to make those lights go straight up and down. Just like that, maybe. Maybe I went too far. So it's hard because this one is straighter than that one. So that one's kind of still tilting out a little bit. Um, compared to the other one. So you just kind of get it the best you can. All right. And you can see there's uh, more controls here where you could control that grid we just showed and uh, cropping grids and things. All that is right here uh, under this lens tab. So I'm, I've fixed that distortion. I'm good to go there. Now next is color. Now personally, I don't like to do color now. So I jump over to the Tone tab. This is this one right here. It's called the Exposure tab, actually. And if I go there, uh, you can see that we have White Balance. I think the White Balance is OK. We have an Exposure tab, and that Exposure, Contrast, Brightness, Saturation. I'll come back to that. I like to jump right to High Dynamic Range first. And that has Highlight Shadows, Whites, and Blacks. And I like to take the highlights down a little bit in this image and bring the shadows up. I, Kind of do use the um, processing convention where you flatten the image first. I got this from video um, uh, processor, video graders, people who grade video. They kind of flatten the image out first, and then they bring in contrast selectively uh, with different controls. So here I'm flattening the image by bringing down the highlights and opening up the shadows. Then what I'll do. Um, white and black controls are new to Capture 120. Those actually weren't in previous versions of Capture One. I'm so used to not using those, I prefer to use levels. And with levels, all I do is you can see how the uh, right side where the highlights are, how there's no info right here. I just take this bottom part of this control and kind of slide it towards there. You can see how it just brightened everything up. Then I go to this side where the shadows are and I take that and I push that that way. So I just kind of eyeball it. And so I'm reintroducing the contrast, but I'm reintroducing it in a very selective way at the far ends of the um, tone spectrum. So I'm bringing the brightest parts brighter and the darker parts darker. So that kind of reintroduces contrast the way I like to do it. Sometimes I use the curve uh, tab too, but I don't think I need to on this one, on this image. Um, we have clarity and structure down here at the bottom. And I'll just bring in a little bit of clarity, a little bit of structure. So, so far, so good. It's um, still bugging me a little bit about these light poles, how they still seem a little bit crooked. This one seems to be tilted out now, but I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, but you get the idea of what, how to fix those. So after I do tone, then I jump back over to color. Now, the color controls in Capture One are really advanced compared to anything else. And you really could do a lot with the color. And you can see we got uh, this basic color editor at the top. We have, uh, if you use uh, convert your image to black and white, you could uh, adjust the black and white mix here. We have color balance here. You have uh, these, those of you that grade video, uh, this probably looks more familiar to you than the average. A uh, person that just processes raw still images. Uh, we have white balance. I think the white balance is okay. Uh, we have the base characteristics. It was a Fujifilm X-T3. Um, we have all the different Fujifilm film simulation modes here that we could use if we wanted to. You can see as I hover over them, it, the image will change into those different modes. I'm going to leave it in auto right now. But I'm going to go up here uh, to this section. This is a common HSL section, use saturation and lightness. And then what I'm going to do is go to yellow and I'm going to brighten up the yellows in the image a little bit. Maybe increase saturation of those a touch. Um, we'll go to green and I'm going to make the greens a little darker. So it gives me a little more tonal contrast. And I'll just increase uh, the green saturation a little bit. And then we'll jump over to blue and I'm going to bring lightness down a blue. So we're going to darken our blue sky a touch. And maybe bring saturation up a little bit on that. And I think that is OK. Now what I could do is I could jump back over um, to the tone. 
and at the bottom, um, no, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm sorry. Is we'll jump right over to sharpening and noise reduction. And what I want to do is zoom in. So with the hand tool, you just kind of double click, and I'm going to look at the sky, and you can see uh, better any noise you may have. Now, this is too where Capture One is a little more nuanced than other applications. Uh, you have a lot finer control with luminance, color noise reduction, and sharpening in general in Capture One than you do in other applications. Uh, so I'm going to bring up luminous noise just a little more. And I'm just looking at the uh, noise in the sky uh, just to see what it looks like. We'll sharpen it up a touch, probably a little bit over sharpened, but I'm going to leave it like that just to maybe overdo it a touch. Um, I'm not going to do anything here. Now we do have spot removal. There's really no sensor spots or dust spots in the image, and that's what that is meant for. Now for here, like we have this kind of part of a branch sticking in, well that we want to use either a clone or heal tool. And if you go back uh, to, let's say, even the color tab, you could see up here there's a layers section, and you have to do any clone or healing on its own layer, a special layer. So what you would do is you would go to this plus sign and click and hold. And I think I'm going to use a heal layer here. So it will automatically add the heal layer. Then what you do is you get a brush. So we're going to click on the brush up here in the tool well. And you can see we have a brush. And you can change the size of the brush with your bracket keys. Left bracket key makes it smaller. Right bracket key larger. And then what we're just going to do is we're going to paint on this branch. And you can see it puts a red overlay on it. Now what it will do is it will sample an area. Those of you that use Lightroom are familiar with this, but it's sampling a very bad area. And those of you that use Lightroom know that they always sample the worst area possible. So what we need to do is just drag it uh, somewhere else and just drag it so it looks like it's, it's kind of fitting in best it can. Now when you let go, it'll blend in a little better. You can see how it blended in a little better. So we got rid of that branch there. So um, I'm going to uh, jump back to the lens a little bit because the keystoning still is bothering me. I just can't get it perfect because they're both not on the same plane. Uh, this one is a little bit actually closer to the lens than that one. Also, who's to say that they weren't both perfectly vertical to begin with? This one could have been leaning a little bit to the right uh, as it, you know, as it is. Now, when I did that, you'll see what happened here is this uh, branch got exposed more. So we have to come in there and get rid of that totally. There we go. Okay, so that's that. And I think I'll finish it off uh, with a vignette. And the vignette is over here at the bottom. And we'll just kind of bring it in. And um, the vignette control is a little bit less powerful than vignettes in other applications. You see, you basically just have an amount slider. You move it to the left to make it darker and to the right to make it light. So some ways it's not as advanced as other applications, but in other ways it's more nuanced, as I mentioned, and more advanced. Now I'm going to go back to the hand tool so we don't have that brush bothering us. So I consider it done. Do you want to see a before after? What you need to do right where it says reset, don't just click on that because you'll reset the image back to its original raw file status. What you want to do is hold your alt or option key in. It's alt if you have a PC, option if you have a Mac. Hold that key in while clicking and holding on the reset button. And you'll see before and then let go after. Before after and for some reason it doesn't show any keystone adjustments uh before it just kind of shows all the other processing adjustments so there's before and there's after so you could see um in my opinion i don't know if it came through in this video but in my opinion capture one is a little more nuanced than other applications a little bit finer control in some areas especially with color and somewhat with tone uh, but in some ways, it's it's a little bit hokey, uh, like the vignetting, uh, the spot or um, 
clone and heal. It's a little bit odd if you ask me, but it's still very, very powerful. And again, in the description below the video, I'll have a link uh, to their fully working 30 day free trial. Download the trial and give it a go. See if it works well for you. Now, I plan on doing more videos on Capture One. If you could help me out in the description below this video, write what would you like to see? What types of videos would you like me to do uh, concerning Capture One? And I'll definitely do them. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.